it's Sam. Welcome back to my channel. So today we are finally going to be doing the best of beauty 2019. Is it best in beauty or best of beauty? I don't really know. I think you'll probably say either. Um, so today I'm going to be focusing on the makeup and the brushes and then I think I'm going to do a separate video with skincare and hair care just so that it is, this isn't like a super ridiculously long video because I do want to explain about each product of like what I like about it. So I know I can get a little chatty, so I figured I'd break it up into two. I'm going to link everything down below for you guys, so if there's something that you see here that you feel like you need to try or at least add to your wish list, just check the description box. Everything will be listed down below and linked so that you guys know exactly what everything is. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. You can give me a big thumbs up if you found this helpful. I think this is one of my most favorite videos to watch from people just because I want to know what they really loved in the past year and these are p items that I bought over and over again that I used over and over again that I used up these are just really really good pro products that I would recommend to all of you if I could like gift a basket of my favorite products to my friends this would be it everything in here would be included in the baskets a lot of this stuff I did love throughout the entire year a lot of this stuff though was kind of found towards the end of 2019 so I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with the stuff that I have been using and reaching for the most towards the end of the year like I said some of this stuff was for the whole year but most of the stuff I think was kind of mid-year and I finished out the year with it so I'm just gonna go ahead and share those with you guys and it's a nice mix of drugstore as well as high-end so it's kind of you know there's a little bit for everyone um, so the two foundations that I loved the most and I think well uh, let's okay actually no there there were I'm gonna share with you guys what I used at the beginning of the year because it was something different and this is what I loved towards the first part of the year I did the Estee Lauder Double Wear in the color 3W1 with the 5.5 in the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. Now the reason I like to mix, I always like to go with a super full coverage matte foundation and then mix a more dewy skin-like foundation in with it. That way I get the full coverage and the longevity as well as the matte, pro matte like mattifying properties um, for my oily skin with the long wear or I'm sorry, with the full coverage foundation. However, when you have fine lines and wrinkles, smile lines, you know, just a little bit of stuff going on in this area, the uh, Estee Lauder alone can be a little heavy and it can really age you. So that's why I like to mix a little bit of that Giorgio Armani in with it because then it kind of gives you that more skin-like, glowy, dewy, kind of youthful finish. So that was what I used at the beginning of the year and I absolutely loved this. I think it's a beautiful um, combination. Alone, I cannot do either of them, but together they're amazing. The foundation routine or combination that I wore towards the end of the year was the Tarte Found Sealer and I actually like this alone as well. It's gorgeous. It's full coverage. It's very skin-like, very kind of youthful, and kind of plumps up the skin. It's gorgeous. I feel like if you are more, more mature, you would really like this foundation. Um, if you are oily like me, you do have to pat throughout the day if you wear this alone. However, it doesn't discombobulate or collect or go all weird in the areas where you have some kind of movement. Um, it still stays looking really nice. It's just really oily. But... I don't know, it's one of those things that if you don't really mind about padding and being conscious of like you might be greasy, um, it's great. However, if you are really oily, mixing it with the Revlon Color Stay in combination oily, half and half is gorgeous because then you get the super longevity and mattifying properties of the Color Stay, but you get that really gorgeous, plumping, youthful, skin-like finish with this. Um, and then this is just a much more affordable option than this one that I used at the beginning of the year. So, I... I think the Tarte is about 42 somewhere around there, and then this is like $12.99 or $10.99 at Walmart. So, um, and I'm in the color 330, and then 42N and when I'm super self-tanned. The 42N is quite dark, so that's like a fresh self-tan. I can only wear it alone when I'm like full on first day. Once I start to kind of 
wear down a little bit like today I am wearing this combination and I'm fine it's a completely perfect color for my like day three of self tan I really do like the way these sit on the skin they wear really nicely they're beautiful the color stay alone also is really really nice but again I just like adding a little bit more of that kind of dewy kind of skin like foundation because it really does just sit better in the fine lines and wrinkles and just makes you look a little bit more youthful um, so I love that combination for foundation. For concealers, I have a couple of different options for you guys. I have some correctors that I really like and I have an affordable option and then a slightly more um, not affordable option. This is the Lancome Tinked Idol Ultra Wear Camouflage and this is in the color Peach. So this one is like a really peach toned color and you don't need very much. Like literally I have used this numerous times and it doesn't even look like I've touched it. You need the tiniest amount. It's super pigmented and you basically just put it in the areas that you look a little bit dark and kind of purpley if you have dark circles just underneath um where you would put your regular concealer you can even put it underneath your foundation and it's just a corrector to kind of hide that darkness um, you can also use it if you have any kind of discoloration like kind of ashy tones or um, you know just kind of darker tones around your mouth you can use this as well so that's a really great option if you have a bigger budget if you have a smaller budget the medium 85 n has definitely got some kind of peachy tones to it from the color pop Hyaluronic Creamy Concealer and that one is again a really great kind of corrector for my skin tone at least because it does have that peachy tone and then I just put this underneath and then I would just layer it with the Fair 20N from the ColourPop's the same concealer. Um, so that's a really good combo if you do need a little bit of correcting. I have had um, more dark circles this year, <sighs> don't know why, or I'm sorry last year 2019. I don't know if it's just a part of age or I don't know what it is, but I've noticed that my dark circles have gotten worse. Luckily, I don't have any baggage or like a super sunken in, but it's definitely not like it was when I was younger, so don't know what's going on there, but hey, that's just life. Um, and then the concealer that I used the very most, like for the majority of 2019, and I'm still currently using it, I have it on today, is the Flex Concealer. And this is by Milk Makeup, and I wear the same, or I'm sorry, I wear the color, what do I wear? Fair. And I really love that. It brightens really well under there. It, um, it's, I wouldn't say it's the most insane coverage. Like Shape Tape is more coverage. Um, but I feel like this just sets prettier underneath there. It looks a lot less full coverage. And it's just really nice with the fine lines and wrinkles. I feel like the Shape Tape is great. And I really did like that concealer. But it is a little heavy. And if you are a little bit more mature and you're starting to notice little, you know, creasing underneath your under eyes, this one just sits really nicely under there and it stays all day. It's also really great if you're oily. So I get really greasy in this area and it's, um, it just makes it less oily when I have it in that area because I do the big, huge V. So I really like that. Okay, so for powders, I basically, I, I tried a lot this last year. Um, and I kind of switch back and forth, but I always end up going back to my NARS and this is the NARS Translucent Crystal Light Reflecting Setting Powder and it's a loose one. I really like the loose ones for underneath the eye um, and really all over the face as far as just like filling in the pores. The reason I like this one is that it's super fine and it has tiny little like light reflecting properties. So it really just makes your skin look really pretty but never shimmery. It fills in all of the lines, all of the pores. It just really sets your makeup and makes you look really smooth and polished. It's also great for oily skin. It does not break me out, which is a lot of the time I notice powders can be a real culprit for that for me. Um, so that one is one that I just know I will never have a problem with breakouts with that one. And it just looks really pretty on the skin. It really does just like fill everything up so nicely. I use this all over my whole entire, this, this, this smile lines anywhere that i have pores texture from acne scars i fill it in at the beginning of the year i used it with a brush and i used the i'm going to show all of my tools and brushes later i used a brush i'll share it later at the end of the video nowadays i actually use the beauty sponge from juno and co and i actually like that better i feel like it really does make it even smoother and like more face tuned and then to actually bake like you know this part of my face I used the Ultimate Brush Off Universal from Urban Decay. I really like this for baking. The color is a little bit better than the NARS because sometimes the NARS can make you look a little ashy in this area, especially if you self-tan. Whereas the Universal, it has a, a tiny bit of a 
tone to it to where it doesn't take away any of your color and it just makes everything look really nice and it sets really well it's just a really pretty um, powder without being too heavy for my under eye powders you guys know I love a bright under eye so I use the Ben Nye super white and the pretty pink mixed together it's probably about equal parts the pink kind of just cancels any darkness any kind of you know purple or grayish under eye tones bluish and then the white it just brightens and just makes your eyes just look super like awake and alive and like you actually um, you know are just a young spring chicken so that's really nice I also I just got powder all over my sequins I thought I had the lid on it um, I also like the fact that they are very fine so they don't enhance your wrinkles underneath and I just buff them out with a small brush which I will share later and it just like makes it look really smooth under there so I love those as an all-over setting powder I know it seems like so much powder I don't recommend this much powder if you're dry because you would just look so dry but I am the greasiest person of life I'm so so oily so I can pack on the powder and I will still be oily <laughs> so I I really do use a lot of powders just to set um, and the last one that I use just as an all-over and I don't use very much of it but it's just kind of it gives a tiny little bit of coverage and it just kind of sets the color all together is the luminous silk compact in the shade number two from Giorgio Armani and I love this I actually got turned on I think Jaclyn Hill used it and then I saw Jeffree Star using it this was a long time ago and I have not budged ever since it's expensive I think this is $62 $62 which kind of sucks but it's really it's worth it so I highly recommend it it doesn't like look cakey it doesn't look heavy it doesn't look it doesn't age you it's just a really nice lightweight powder so there were two bronzers that I used the most in 2019 the first part of the year I used the NARS um, Laguna and I ended I kind of ended the year with it as well um, that one's really nice it's got a little bit of a shimmer in it so if you like a super matte I probably wouldn't go with this because there is a bit of a glow it doesn't really look like it when you see it but on the skin especially on the forehead it can enhance texture just a little bit so just keep that in mind um, but it does not break me out which is huge for me and it just it's like a nice color it's a little bit warm but it's not too warm um, so I really like that one the next one that I like is the it's like a peacock one from Too Faced and I can't remember I think it's like the natural lust bronzer I'll link it down below and I'll put a picture right here for you guys so you guys can see what it looks like but it's got like a big peacock on it that one I loved again that one has a lot of kind of shimmer in it but it's really it's natural it doesn't look too shimmery it's a really beautiful color um, I think if you're a little bit more fair that one's probably a better suit than the Laguna but it's just a really nice bronzer and it's massive and it lasts a super long time but I ran out of it I used it all up so that one is also really beautiful and this is like my I bought so many of these NARS Lagunas so um, I really like that one as well um, okay now we're moving on to blush so there was one blush that really stood out for me um, in 2019 and I think it was towards probably the middle of the year that I discovered it or maybe it was the spring I can't remember but this is the Alamar cosmetics and it's the colorette blush trio in the color medium tan so there's a color called seclusion Isla and toasted so I used the what is this seclusion and Isla the most this one's kind of peachy and that one's coral and I mix them both together and you can see like I used the heck out of those blushes so much um, I didn't even touch toasted like toasted is a little bit too mauve and dark for me but those two colors I use so much so I absolutely love this blush it's really pretty there is a bit a slight bit of a sheen but it's not too much it just it just kind of brings life to your cheeks and then towards the end of the year my sweet friend Jess from Moonplay Cosmetics launched a new product um, that is another stroboscope powder which we will be talking about the original one that I love in a minute but she came out with honeymoon and I helped her name this one as well because the first one that I helped her name was called vow which was like it's all about bridal and looking kind of ethereal on your wedding day and then we wanted to come up with like a second um, kind of more fun playful a little bit more color and I thought honeymoon fit it really well because it was kind of a little bit more 
it just reminds me of something a little bit more tropical and it's like a little bit more fun and playful so this is actually like a blush you can use it as a blush alone I really like it as a blush topper because it adds a little bit of a kind of golden sheen over your blush and then it adds just a tiny pop of like this fuchsia coral and it's really pretty so it is like quite pink the sun is this this room is quite bright and I apologize. I don't know if you guys can see that there. Yeah, there we go. The sun blinds this room. It's like so ridiculously bright in here. But see, that's the blush color. So it's kind of like that coral, but it has that sheen. And then I'll swatch the other ones for you. Those are the two, those are the two colors of the other blush. You can see them all next to each other. See the see how the honeymoon has that kind of more of a sheen. Hopefully you guys can tell. I can't tell. It's so like the sun is blinding me in here, but if I close the curtains then it's dark. The struggle is real. I have all three of those on today. Um, now we're moving on to highlighters. So I would say the winner of the whole year was was Vow. I just love this highlighter. I did use Cookie for a little bit from Benefit. Um, I found it from one of Jaclyn Hill's video and I was like, ooh, okay, this is really pretty. Um, and I do still really like it. The only problem that I find with Cookie, and it's pretty blinding, it's really a gorgeous color, is that it really enhances my texture. I just feel like it enhances the texture and I'm really not about that look anymore I just I love the beaming highlight but I just I don't think it looks good on camera it doesn't really look good in person either it's just a bit too much and I feel like a lot of people go overboard with the highlight now and I'm like okay that's enough like I can see all of your texture it does not look cute just stop so I ended up just using the moon play bow I used it years ago when she first came out with it I was obsessed that's all I ever used and then I, you know, I get new products and then I see other people using stuff and I'm like, oh, I'll try that out. But I always end up going back to the bow. The packaging is absolutely adorable. It's called the, the stroboscope. Um, what is it called? The Hyperflash Strobos Stroboscope Hyperflash Powder and the color is bow. These are cruelty free, which makes me really happy. There's a little kitty right on the bottom there to let you know. Bow is just, I mean, I have it on right now. It is just the most beautiful, and I don't actually have a whole lot on. I've just been really, I've been doing a little bit more less, a little bit more less, a little bit less highlighter lately. It's just like, just kind of a subtle kind of glow versus like, highlight streak. I just don't like the way that looks anymore. And you can build this up, but I usually put a ton on and then I buff out with my powder, the rest of it, just so that it's not like super intense. But I will add a little bit more just for this video, just so that you guys can see how gorgeous it is because you really can build it up um, and it's just oh, it's just so beautiful it's just like this soft kind of peachy pinky it's kind of icy but it's not icy if that makes sense like it's blinding enough to where it can be kind of icy looking but not like in a purple blue way because icy to me seems like too cool but it's icy enough to where you can get a good beam and a good blinding highlight. It's kind of got more of a pinky peachy tone and there are little tiny kind of sparkles in there. So it's so beautiful when you go out into the sun. I'm just gonna pat that since I added more powder since I haven't sprayed. Um, but it's just so pretty and it kind of looks dewy on the skin. Like it's just such a beautiful highlight. And I like the fact that it doesn't enhance my pores or my texture. I just am not about that life. I really want to minimize. And like you do all this work to put all your powders on to fill out your pores. And then you put a dang highlighter on and then you're like, dang, here's my pores. And you're like, what, what was the point of all that mess? I love that. It's probably going to be my go-to for the rest of my life just because it's so, it's so friendly on the, um, on the texture and pores if you are someone who doesn't have baby smooth skin. I've started derma rolling again. I used to do that a long time ago and then I forgot about it. I think I moved and then I lost my derma roller and then I never did it again and then I got a new derma roller 
and um, I started doing it again and I'm telling you what you guys from the first time you do it you'll wake up in the next morning if you do it at night and your skin visibly looks plumper your texture looks better and I also added hyaluronic acid into my skincare routine as well and I feel like that's made a huge difference someone told me that that was I was missing out and the one that I had before I tried a couple of ones and they broken me out so I found one now that doesn't break me out and I feel like it's made such a huge difference just from the short time I've been doing it I'm like I really do feel like it's making a humongous difference because what happens is you derma roll and it's tiny little needles that kind of prick your skin and kind of I guess trick your skin into thinking that it is harmed I guess it is slightly harmed and so not in a bad way and so your body produces more collagen to go and fix those little tiny needle pokes and then in turn builds up your like plumps up your skin so I really love it I'm kind of obsessed now and I think that if I continue doing it regularly for like the whole of 2020 I can't imagine how good my skin's gonna be because I've only do been doing it for a short time and I feel like it's made a huge difference um, but we're not talking about skincare we're talking about makeup this is why my videos are so long so this is a drugstore option and I was obsessed with this and I actually lost my original one but I like the original one better because it like got the oils from my skin and it like was creamier for some reason. I don't like the new one quite as much. So if you get a new one and you feel like it's a little bit chalky, really buff your brush in and like use your finger and kind of like work it in so that it's not so powdery and then it will sit on your skin prettier. And I think this works better when you apply it before you set your powder because then it really puts the sparkles into the skin. Um, but this is the Maybelline Master Holographic by Face Studio and this is in the color 050. This is one of those highlighters that's more of a sparkle. Um, than it is an actual color and it adds just the most beautiful sheen to your face and when you go out in the sun it's just like little fairy sparkles I have a new one that I prefer over this one but this is a great drugstore option if you are on a budget they're very very similar this one just has a better texture this is the beauty counter and it's an eyeshadow um, it's called moon dust but they have it in a smaller palette and it's like a little quad and it has moon dust in that one and that's like on sale right now for I think 23 bucks so I would recommend doing that but if you can't get you know if you don't want that one and you want a full shadow palette you can use this one in the middle as an actual highlighter and it's a very similar like they're almost exact the texture of the um, yeah it's just prettier it is less chalky it's more kind of sparkly and it just kind of like goes into the skin so well and then it leaves these little sparkles so that's actually what I've been using a ton lately when I have my very minimal like less powder day makeup because it just looks like little tiny sparkles on your cheeks and it looks really dewy and it just looks like you've been kissed by fairies now we're gonna move on to eyebrows because eyebrows are so important and especially in 2019 they were very important so I have two products that I love and used the most um, this one again was towards the end of the year but this one I think I used for the majority of the year and this is the Urban Decay Brow Blade now this has one side that is like a tiny little like ink pencil like a you know not a pencil but a, a little ink pen so you can get tiny little hair strokes and then this side is the actual like regular eyebrow pencil um, so I like filling in the majority of my brow with the pencil and then just adding little tiny hair strokes especially in this front part of my face with the actual little pen and I just feel like it is such a natural as natural as I can be without having you know I have like no eyebrows right there um, but it really looks pretty and I like the color of it um, and it lasts all day long and then I just set it with the Wander Beauty and this is the they made this writing so small that it, or it actually hurts to try and focus on frame your face precise brow gel in taupe and it's just a tiny little brush super tiny and you just brush up your brows and then it sets everything in place adds a little bit of like a blonde kind of highlight and then it just makes your brows look fuller and like you actually have hair so that's brows as far as eyeliners there are a couple that I really liked I didn't wear eyeliner a lot but when I did if I wanted to like a dark smoky look or if I did want to wear eyeliner up top I don't like liquid eye eyeliner I just don't 
it doesn't look good on my shape of my eyes anymore. It's just not my jam. It's just too much. Um, but if I was going to wear a liner, I wore these two colors by Marc Jacobs. The first one is called Fine Wine, and it's like this really, really pretty like burgundy color. It's amazing. The pigmentation of these is gorgeous. They stay all day. They don't bother sensitive eyes. And the other color I used was Irony. So that was just a solid black. And then I also used up Brownie. And Brownie is like just a really nice, deep, dark chocolate brown. So these are amazing. They are well worth the money. I've honestly had them for so long. And like I don't use them a lot, but a little bit goes a long way. They are super pigmented and they're just unbelievable and they last all day. They don't smudge. They're just insane. And then as far as a like a waterline for brightening, and that's usually what I do most of the time is just use a kind of nude colored one in my waterline just to pop my eyes and make them look really nice and awake. This is the Lord & Berry Silk Kajal in 1002 Nudo. And you can get these off of Amazon. I actually need to get a new one because, or sorry, a new one. I need to get a new pencil sharpener. The color is right there. You see that? Um, because mine is lost. I moved all my stuff up into this room and I lost it. I'm like, how do I do? The, how do I accomplish losing so much? It's ridiculous. And then as far as mascaras and a lash curler, you guys know if you follow me on Instagram, I had a bit of a situation with my lashes and I was losing a ton and I was like, I don't get where my lashes are going. What the heck? Um, it turns out I opened up the little rubber bit in my lash curler that was a Tweezerman lash curler and I had so many lashes in there. It was insane how many lashes were just ripped off sitting in there, deceased. It was very sad. Um, so I switched to a long comb lash curler and this one is great if you have rounded eyes and that's my problem is that a lot of the time I try and find a lash curler. My eyes are so round that it won't fit my eye. So this one is amazing because if you have rounded eyes, it will fit perfectly. It gives you such a lovely lift and curl. It doesn't break or pull your lashes at all. So I love that one. Um, and then my holy grail that I've been using for so long, I mean, I think this has been years, is the Lancome Seals Booster XL Primer. This is a white primer, and it just basically is an amazing primer that lengthens, volumizes, it just makes your lashes look really great before you put your mascara on. And then if you, if you pair these together, the Lancome Hypnos Drama, it does have a bit of a curve to your wand. Um, it is amazing. It gives you the best lashes. I don't wear falsies and so I have to really make sure that my lashes are super duper. Um, and that also, I think the Seals Booster XL has a treatment in it. So it's actually like a lash conditioner, which I think is really great. It doesn't transfer. If you have oily eyelids, it's not going to go up into your brow and leave you a look in a hot mess. It's not going to transfer down here. It's just a really great combo and it makes my lashes look as good as they possibly can without actually having to wear um, lashes. Now we're on to eyeshadows. So eyeshadows were, <laughs> basically ColourPop stole the show with eyeshadows this year. Number one, because I have a super sensitive eye, a lot of shadows I found definitely um, made my eye water and bothered them. So I had to be really, really careful. And I ended up just feeling like ColourPop is the, for me, one of the brands that does not ever bother my eyes, so I just always stuck with ColourPop. But ColourPop is number one, affordable. Number two, comes out with new stuff all the time. So they're always switching it up, which is super fun. And they have such quality products for the price. It's insane. I don't know how they do it, but their stuff is so affordable and it's such a good pigment. And it's like, I mean, it's just as good as any other high-end brand that you would use if not better. I love them. And their palettes are bomb. They put amazing sparklies with shimmeries, with mattes, and their colors are great. Their tones are gorgeous. So the one that I used probably the most, and this was I think towards the end of the year, but I use this literally every day, is the ColourPop So Jaded palette. This was the Kathleen Lights collection and um, or collaboration. First of all, the packaging is beautiful. It's all crystals and they're all they're all called different crystals. So diamond, rose quartz, ruby, royal jewels, pearl, citrine, garnet. I love it. I love the vibe. When you open it up, it is just absolutely so beautiful with the crystals. I just, I love it. But the palette itself has some really great colors and you can see those ones are the ones that have been used the most, but I use them pretty much every day. They're just a great, Every day, that's what I have on at the moment. I pretty much wear the same colors over and over again. 
I, I, you know, I feel like when I was younger, I really enjoyed kind of switching it up and trying new looks and going smoky sometimes. I have a, I have a piece of light, don't I? Piece of light trying to blind me here. Um, but as I get older, I don't know. I just feel like it's more flattering going a little bit more neutral. It just, I don't know, I like the way I look better when it's just a more neutral look. And then I also really loved, and this one I used kind of towards the beginning of the year. This was the Sweet Talk palette from ColourPop. This one, again, I used a ton. It has a little bit more warm tones, um, which is really gorgeous, but you can see the one I used the most, which is that shimmery one, which I have on my eyes right now. It's amazing, but I used um, basically this one right here. So that color and that color in my crease and I always use up two usually and then I used this one right here and that one so that one's really glittery and that one's super shimmery and another one okay I have to switch out my curtains now I have all these layers of curtains in here because the Sun is so intense we live in a new build so we have no um, trees around us for shade and so we literally are just like sun all the time so if it's like a sunny day it blasts right in this window once we set everything up and I went to film in this room I realized oh wow this is a really sunny room and it blasts me right in my eye but I just closed I have two layers so I have, I have three layers of curtains I have one that's just a white sheer and then I have one that's a little bit more of like it's got color on it because it's cute but it kind of adds another layer of protection against the sun because the sun literally is right here right now and it's trying to trying to whack me in my eyeballs. Um, so this one is another one. This is by Bye Bye Birdie. And I'm sorry, this is called Bye Bye Birdie. It's by ColourPop. Um, and this one is kind of more purpley, but if you like those purpley kind of plummy tones, it's gorgeous. But I specifically used it for these two sparkly colors right here. The opal color, which is called Ruffled, and then the Amuse Me. And they're both just like really sparkly and fabulous. That was not a good swatch. They don't swatch great, but they look amazing on the lids. So see, that one's kind of chunky, and then that one's like really fine glitters. So those ones are amazing if you want like a really sparkly look. Um, and I use those a lot, kind of towards the end of the year, I'd say kind of September, October time. I just love them. Um, and then the last eyeshadow palette, I used palettes mostly this year. I didn't really use single shadows very much. Um, this is the Violet Voss Essentials Pro Series. And this I literally used mainly for this color right here, which is cream, which is the color that I put in my inner corner. And that just gives me a little bit of a creamy, shimmery eye pop right there. This is actually a really pretty palette though. I have done a look with it before. I've used it, I think once. And it did have some really gorgeous colors, but I love it specifically for that cream color. Cause then I don't use, I don't have to use MAC um, spray with it. It's just so pigmented that you can just put it on dry and it's amazing. So I love that. Now we're moving on to lips and then we'll go on to brushes. I used up a Lord and & Berry and I think it was called Natural Lip Liner. This one's a little bit darker. This is like the shade up from it and this one is what I'm wearing today. And it's really gorgeous but there's one called Natural and it's like the shade down from that and it's beautiful. The texture of these is lovely. It's just, they glide on stay on all day they're really really great um, and again I think you can get these on Amazon so this is the Laneige and this is the lip sleeping mask this is insane if you need a super good conditioner or lip balm for your lips it says it's a lip sleeping mask so then at first I was like oh I'm only supposed to wear this at night darn but it's not like it's a, just a lip balm but it's super hydrating super conditioning like really amazing and I'm obsessed with it and it has the most pretty little pink tint to it it just, it looks great alone. It looks great underneath things. You can see I've used it a ton and this is my second pot. I'm obsessed. And it smells like strawberries. It's just so, it's not sticky, it's not tacky. It is fabulous. My lips have not been dry since I started using that. And it's just like, that's weird for me because my lips are really dry normally. Um, and then of course, this is the color that I use pretty much every single day. Almost every single time someone has asked me what I have on my lips, it's this. And this is the Sam Sherman IGXO collaboration that I did with IGXO. And this is in the color Maxine. It comes in a cute little box, which I have on display because it's like my, my special little thing that I accomplished in 2019 and it was kind of special for me. 
I named it after my aunt and it's got gorgeous flowers all over it. I don't want it to come across like I'm saying that because it's mine. If it, well, first of all, I would never have put it out if I didn't like it because that would be really bad. Um, so obviously I like it because I, and I was really picky and I felt really bad when I was working with them because I kind of was a pain in the butt. I mean, I always try to be very nice, but I said no so many times because it's like, nope, don't like the formula. Nope, don't like the texture. Nope, don't like the color. Nope, wrong tone. Um, and so we, we worked on it for such a long time. But when we finally got, when we knew it, we knew it. Like when they sent me the sample for the, the final time that I was like, okay, that's it. It was like, as soon as I put it on, I was like, yes, this is it. This is what we have been searching for. And it's so amazing. And I was inspired by um, a lipstick that I used to use from Natural Collection called Rose Petal, as well as Plain Koi. So they're very similar to those two colors, um, but it's basically a liquid lip gloss. And it was the first gloss that, that IGXO had ever done because when they initially came to me, they said, okay, we want to do a matte li liquid lipstick with you. And I was like, well, I don't like matte liquid lipsticks. I don't wear them. It would not be very organic for me because everyone knows that I don't like them. So I didn't want to put out something that I would never wear myself because that doesn't make sense. So I asked them if we were able to come up with a gloss formula. And I think that's why it took so long was because we were the first gloss formula, but it's insane. You guys, it's such a beautiful color. It's like a pinky pink peachy and the funny thing is that I've seen it on so many of you guys because you've sent me pictures when you first bought it there's the color right there and it looks different on everyone like it's one of those colors that like some people when they're super fair it looks more like a bright peach color and then some people it looks like on me it looks quite light and like very plain coy kind of like light really peak, pinky peachy and then some people it looks more pink some people it looks more peach I've seen it on deeper skin tones I've seen it on medium skin tones it's honestly so beautiful the only thing I would recommend doing if you are just gonna get this it's super opaque it's like insanely pigmented you don't need very much and I always recommend putting a lip liner on underneath it and I always do that anyway just to make my lips look bigger but a darker like kind of more mauve tone like the one that I have on right here that Lord and Barry Nudo or um, Mac Soar something like that that has a little bit more of that kind of mauve tone and then layering this over it but you need to make sure that your lips are hydrated put a lip balm down first because it is such a pigmented opaque formula that I feel like if you put it just on dry crusty lips it will enhance like it I, well I feel like that works with ed anything like anything that you put down that's quite a thick formula or opaque formula will enhance your dryness so make sure that you're always just like you, you don't want to be dry. That's not cute. Um, but it is a gloss formula. So it's long lasting, but it's glossy. So I really just wanted to have something that had more of a glossy kind of youthful plumping finish. It has an amazing vanilla mint, mint, a vanilla mint scent, which is amazing. It's just gorgeous. And I have it on today and I don't know why my camera is not focused on me. What is going on you camera? Um, so I was probably blurry that whole time. I'm so sorry. Um, that's irritating, but anyway, it's amazing. I love it. I pretty much wear it every single day. If I wear a full face of makeup, I'm wearing it. It's too much to wear when I don't have any makeup on. Like when I'm wearing minimal makeup, I feel like it's just too much because it's so opaque and so pigmented. But when I'm wearing my full glam, that's what I wear. I layer this on the very top. And this is the Buxom White Russian Soft or sorry, full on lip cream. And this is kind of that cooling, plumping. It feels kind of cold on your lips. And it's just this amazing, creamy, kind of more sheer, um, slightly lighter. It's just so beautiful. So you can see they're both quite similar, but mine's slight, slightly darker by maybe like a shade. Um, but this one, and that one's a little bit more sheer as well. I'm over here, just right here, here we go. Together, they just plump up your lips and make them look so beautiful. So. That is my lip combo of choice. And then I do have a couple of options if you like a red lip, because I did wear a red lip towards the end of the um, year and I really liked it. And it's funny because this is actually a matte lipstick and I really enjoyed it. Um, but this is the, it's like a really good formula. This is the P Power Matte Lip Pigment in Funky Town from NARS. Amazing. If you want just a really bright, intense red lip that does not go anywhere, that does not bleed into your fine lines and wrinkles around your mouth, this is amazing. Um, and then I used it with three of, I, I would kind of alternate, 
The first one is the Urban Decay 24-7 Lip Pencil in Bang. I also love 714 and Bad Blood. And I will swatch all of these for you guys. So the Funky Town is kind of more of an orangey coral red. It's, oh, it's insane. It's so beautiful. I get so many compliments when I wear that. And then the 714 is pretty darn close. It is, again, more of that orangey. So I, most of the time I wore it with 714. But if you want to kind of make it less orangey, you can do, or I'm sorry, that was bang. If you want to make it less orangey, you can do it with 714 from Urban Decay. Or this one is even more cool toned. This is the Bad Blood. And that one is more of a pink. And so that's going to take all of the orange away. So those three are really gorgeous with it. If you have yellower teeth, I would recommend going with a more blue toned lipstick because that's going to, you know, make your teeth look more white. Um, okay, and then last but not least, we have my tools and my setting spray. So the setting spray that I loved the most was the Doll 10 Skin Reviving Setting Mist. This is beautiful because it adds a bit of a glow. Um, it just makes your skin look really hydrated. I do feel like I get a little bit oilier with it, um, so I kind of tend to just do the outside of my face. And then this one's really great if you're looking for something that's a little bit more mattifying. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter Summer Sol Solstice. I feel like this one's a lot better for oily skin, but I really like the way this one looks because it just looks really pretty and my skin just looks, everything looks melted into each other. So those are my two of choice. Um, and then as far as tools go, I have the, the sponge I used so much. I have bought so many of these. I bought them on Amazon. I actually worked with them. That's how I originally found them is that they reached out to me. I did a sponsored video with them. I fell in love with it and then I ended up buying tons because I'm obsessed. These are the Juno & Co beauty sponges. They're massive. They're covered with velvet and they just put the foundation on so beautifully and because it's so big it like makes your foundation so quick. Um, and then as far as a powder brush that I used for the beginning of the year and I also use this on the days that I don't wear very much makeup but I just need a tiny little bit of powder. This is the Luxie 742 blusher brush and this is what I use with that NARS powder just to kind of go underneath around my smile lines. Now I use the sponge to do that but when I have minimal makeup days I still use this. Next we have the tiny little brush I use for my under eye brightening powders. This is what I use with my Ben Nye powders. This is the Morphe MB23. It's actually an eyeshadow brush, I think. It's amazing, I am obsessed. If you can still find it, get it. It's just this perfect little buffing brush for just right underneath in that area. Bronzer brush, I used the Moda. It looks like this. It doesn't have a name or a number. It just looks like this and it's super soft and amazing. And then I use this brush. This is the Luxie 734 Airbrush Powder Brush. That's what I use to set with my Giorgio Armani Compact Powder. Obsessed. It's such a great brush. For blush, I use the M509 from Morphe. That was a little rough, but I really like the way it puts the blush down. For to like brush off my bake, I use the Luxie 522 Tapered Highlighter Brush. And I can just really buff in all of that bake powder and just put it all over the rest of my face to just really melt everything in together. I use for highlighter, this is my best highlighter brush. It's the Morphe E27. It's unbelievable. I love it. I'm just like obsessed with this brush, you guys. It's so good. If you have been applying highlighter and you don't like the way your highlighter applies, get this brush. Hopefully it's still in stock because it's amazing and I'm not affiliated with Morphe. I actually used to be and they kicked me off. I didn't make enough money for them. So they kicked me off the affiliate program. Lame. Now we go on to eyeshadow brushes. So, oh, I'm sorry. My little nose contour brush I use is this. This is the Sigma 4D HD Precision. It's like a little pyramid and you can get it right there to contour your nose. When I want to get um, like a sparkle or a glitter or a shimmer and really pack it on, I use the D DS05, the pigment brush from Dominique Cosmetics. That's really good for just packing down a color. As far as my crease brush, I use the Pixie. It's just a fluffy brush. I got it in PR and I can't even find it to show online for you guys, but it's like a massive fluffy brush and it's amazing and I love it. And then I use the Sigma Eye Shading E55. That one's great for my brow bone. My little inner corner, I used a Coastal Sense brush that's super old and it's just a tiny little kind of half dome and I pop it right in the corner. For my 
um, lower lash line, I use the Moda Pro BMX 402 Smudger Brush, and I just pop that right underneath. I also use this as my lower or my upper lash line, just to kind of smoke it out and make it a little cat eye. And then if I want a really solid line, I use the BMX 498 line brush from Moda Pro. And that's what that one looks like. So those are all of the brushes that I use on a regular basis. Um, I also use this little one sometimes too. It's the winged liner Sigma E06. It's just like a little tiny winged liner. Sometimes I just use the tip of it to cover a zit with concealer if I have like a real friendly friend that's like, woo! Um, then I'll just use that to kind of just make a tiny little, if it's like super red. There we go, there's my best in beauty. I'm pretty sure this was like gonna be an hour long video. I don't know, that's why I couldn't, in, I couldn't feature skincare as well. That's just too much. Um, but there you guys go. Hopefully you guys found that helpful found some products that maybe you didn't know about that you think you might want to try. These are my tried and true, tested a million times, holy grail. If I can't have anything else, I want these. The, these come with me when we travel, which is hardly ever, but occasionally we do. I bring all of these with me. They're just so good. And the nice thing about these palettes, and that's why I like palettes so much, is that you can switch it up, you know? This one especially, the So Jaded, there's so many different options. You can do blues, you can do greens, you can do purples, you can do warms, you can do neutrals. There's a lot of different options, and that's what I like, especially if you are going to be traveling with a palette. You want to bring something that's going to give you lots of different options. If you want to do a super dark smoky eye because it's nighttime, you have that option. If you want to do super daytime appropriate, you have that option. If you want to do sparkly, you have that option. And that's what I like about those palettes. Um, but those are my favorites, you guys. Those are my best of beauty, the ones that really stood out and just, they just, they were the winners. The winners of 2019. So I'm probably going to do a skincare one now so that you guys have an idea of what I've been loving for skincare, and that will be up tomorrow. I'll link everything in the description box for, for you guys below, just in case you want to get any of these items. They'll all be down there. I'll leave the colors as well. Also, shout out to my sequin top. This is from Walmart. It's super itchy. As I move on my sleeves, not the most comfortable on my arms. Everywhere else feels fine because it has a liner, but as I move, it's like scratching me. But it does look very sparkly and best of beauty, doesn't it? So I thought I'd be extra glam for you guys today. So, love you guys. I'm going to go now. Bye!